What is up everybody? Thank you for tuning in again. This is a build of the A26B Invader from a Rebel. This is a great kit, has lots of good detail. We're going to get into it today. As you can see, this kit features two different decal versions. The one in front of you is the one that I've actually built, and it features another uh, version, which is a fire rescue. Uh, the ugly seemed pretty friggin' ugly to me, so uh, I'm not really into that. But the uh, military version is pretty cool, so I went with that one instead. Let's crack it open and get into it. First things first is the instructions, my favorite part. Instructions are pretty detailed, pretty standard Rebel instructions. And uh, as you can see, it takes me forever to get through this part. So sorry about that. This video was edited a while ago before I changed my style of um, video recording. As I fumble through the box here, I'll let you know a few things about this project that really were really cool. So this is a vintage kit from Marvel. You can barely get your hands on one of these unless you're an eBayer. Uh, and uh, it's just a super awesome kit with a bunch of parts. And uh, it was a lot bigger than I thought. It's about as big as a B25. So um, that's kind of the size comparison there. It's about as big as a B25 Mitchell. And um, and very minimal decal decals like there's barely any decals here but super great kit super fun to build super detailed for a revel kit anyways if that's it was based off an old monogram kit so definitely not as high quality as tamiya or hasigawa or any of the newer kits out today but still fun kit to build if you're into vintage restoration kits so there's quite a few different sprues here and uh, gosh it takes me forever to get through this part. I'm getting bored just sitting here watching my own video. Darn it. Man, figure it out. This was done a couple years ago. Which I actually already have the video on YouTube but I'd rather condense it all into a full build just so you get all the content in one video. So this is a classic Revel monogram kit, so there is no recessed panel lines. Literally none. The only recessed panel lines are the terrible gaps that it leaves in the middle. <laughs> so, but there's lots of missiles and bombs you can attach to this thing, which is kind of cool. And uh, you can see there is a lot of raised panel lines, but uh, what good does that do? I don't know. It does no good, so <laughs> there is that too. But uh, lots of ladders and things for bomb drops, bomb doors, and the propellers actually were pretty good quality propellers. I think one of the propellers was backwards though, if I remember correctly, which, uh, yeah, I, there's nothing you can do about it, so you just put a backwards propeller on, who cares, they're all, they're all the same, there's, there's a couple other model, model kits that have backward propellers, like the B25 Mitchell that has been the same forever, nobody's fixed it, and, uh, and I don't even remember which, which one of the other ones, I think maybe the B17 or something, but, The landing gear on this kit was much better quality than most kits. Um, this was a pretty like special kit when it came out. It, they put more time into it than, than other kits. So um, the landing gear and other details on the interior were actually really, really good. I was surprised in the interior detail. Um, you can see there all the ridge lines, all the little like braces and, and everything. But the exterior was just plain old raised panel lines off of this. Um, the cockpit was super detailed and super good looking. And as you can see, the, the engine is awful. 
the engine has terrible details. It's, it's the most plain it could ever be. So you need to do a little bit of sprucing to those. But yeah, the best detail in the kit was the cockpit and the, the landing gear because um, it actually has the flattened tires and it has little ridges on it too. So super nice there. But um, I had good figures, but I, I never paint the figures. They go into a bin. <laughs> Instructions are super detailed and, um, and very high quality Revel uh, instructions. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes together just like any other model kit. You just follow the steps and move along on to the next one. But uh, I had no problems with the instructions. Um, but obviously, whenever you assemble a twin engine airplane, it's always a little bit tricky with um, four separate parts going together. You know, usually a single a single engine airplanes, it's all in one fuselage and everything like that. So you definitely want to make sure your joints are, are decently seamed together and make sure everything's squeezing together tight and locked in so that nothing happens to your model sitting on the shelf. And I am building the black version, which is a pretty cool version. I have no idea where this thing sits, but uh, there is a real one out there, so pretty neat. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, everyone knows how to paint the interior of the cockpit green, so I did not film that. Um, this is a really detailed cockpit, and uh, it comes out really good after you do some silvering and um, you paint all the de details in. But, um, I paint, usually I paint all the interior cockpits uh, before, like um, before I assemble it all together, but a lot of the times I paint it all together. So all the parts are glued together and you can actually just paint it all green when everyone everything's already glued and put in place because the glue sticks a lot better. And there you go. It's all painted up good and, and that's all you get. <laughs> all that time you get one second. <laughs> one second to see the finished product. But uh, here are the fuselage, hash with all, fuselage halves, which all of them are painted green and weathered and then silvered. And then after I weather it and silver it, I pop my windows in. That's the best time to do it because then you can't get your windows dirty. I'm using micro clister crystal clear on the windows, making sure that all the gaps are filled all the way around and uh, so that when you paint the outside of it, it doesn't leak in and you get overspray on the inside of your model. Um, that's just a good way to do it. Um, this is some old stuff that I used to use. I mean, it's super shiny, super metallic, super awesome, but it's oil. So, you know, after it works better using it on latex paints. So you use oil on top of the latex so you can wash it off and then with, um, with oil-based uh, stripper so that you don't like wash out the water base. But honestly, you can do it either way. You can go over with water-based paints and then do a nice wash on top of, you know, um, water-based like finish. So either way, you can do it with oil or water-based. It doesn't matter. But uh, this stuff actually was really legit. I like to get myself another 10 of it but that company is not in um, production anymore but yeah so you just go around with a dry brush and hit all your edges and make sure everything looks pretty rustic er, and like worn in and, and pretty cool looking this really gives the model life so if you don't do this you like making your models look brand new that's cool but if you like making them look worn in like they had just done some damage um just got out of battle 
this is a really really necessary step in order to give your model that really lifelike appearance and 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 on top of giving it you know the worn in kind of lived in type of look um, it really brings the details of the kit uh, out and makes it more visible to the all-seeing eye when everything's closed in you can see inside of the cockpit you can actually see those little ridges and stuff so it's it's not like it actually wears any anything in per se you can use this as a technique to bring the details of the cockpit out so you can use other colors as well not even just silver you can use gray black tan um, for dirt effects and such things like that but um i usually just go with the easy route and just silver everything because it makes it pr pretty worn in and everything that was made in that day was a metal uh, a me metal type look anyways on the instrument panel is the most efficient place to use this technique because, or you can use white uh, with the instrument panel, but it just really brings out all those little tiny circles and it makes it look really real. So it's a great technique to use on any of your models that you could use in the future. If you haven't already tried this method before, but yeah, any bright color like this on any type of surface that's ridged will bring out all those details and you can see it working right now. The Invader is one of my favorite airplanes. Uh, I've seen it at Oshkosh several times in uh, other air shows. They're just big and clunky and um, cool looking in the air. And uh, I don't know, they're just, they sound cool. They sound like a B-25, they have the same engine. And it's just a really cool airplane to see in the sky and um, to watch go overhead, man. It's, it's a neat experience. Um, you know, it, I don't know how many are around, but uh, I've gotten the privilege to see some fly in action and and uh, it's always a treat. They're cool airplanes. Nice and slow, you can see them, they're big, um, they're fat and uh, yeah, they got cool sound to them and usually up there with the bombing runs if you're at any air show. All right, so with those basic techniques and some time and some patience, there is the finished cockpit. It is looking dandy. I gotta tell you, this one came out really good. Got my reds, got my yellows out, painted some wires, put in some new wires that I thought would look good in there. And uh, this is the finished product of the interior. Um, I'm not like other YouTubers. I don't spend a lot of time on the inside. I get what needs to be done good and move on because the outside takes a lot of time and patience too, especially with these older kits. Um, you know, you could spend a week on an interior, whereas I like to spend a good three days. So um, this is the inside and all my windows are in. Um, all the details look pretty good. And the fit on this kit was pretty awful. Um, I had to use a lot of tape, a lot of CA, a lot of different techniques to get this thing to smush together right. Um, it seemed like one side was actually bigger than the other, which is really, really annoying uh, because it just it doesn't go together right. You can see right there as those little ridges just don't line up right. And, and even on this little circle part, that's even bigger. So I had to sand that out, make sure that the turret spun good. Um, and I think it, it came out good. I mean, obviously it's a model. So if you do the work, you put in the time, you can make it come out right. But it's annoying to do so. I'd really like to get into some nicer kits, but I'm stuck on this collection. So um, that is what it is. But yeah, you just work your way around with, uh, with some Tamiya and start putting everything together, man. I really like the way this horizontal stabilizer went into the airplane. It's super secure. It's snugged right in there. That is a treat to have because usually you're dinking around with two different parts, not sure which angle they're supposed to be at. And since this one did have a little bit of an angle, it made my life that much easier. There's some cool turrets going on the bottom of the wing there. And uh, that, that's a pretty cool feature. I, I like that feature um, on this model. It was a, a decent job by the whoever designed it because um, these are pretty pretty accurate to what was happening in in the old days this was an attack aircraft and uh, it's pretty decent pretty decent
does give you some pretty um, good connector pieces to, to go together with it. Um, but you got to make sure those are glued nicely and they harden up perfect. Um, mine is solid just because I did what I had to do and, uh, and, and yeah, you just, you got to glue them right and you got to make sure that they're straight and going in the right place. And also, I don't know how many times I've done this, but I've always, I've always missed one on these stupid engines. But um, I did the engines up as best as I could, just with aluminum and some black um, weathering. And just put it together like that. Every piece goes in just right, and it comes out pretty decent looking. The nose had some options with it. Um, it had two options. There was one non-gun option, and then there was this option with the thing. And this, this is where uh, one side was bigger than the other on the fuselage and you can see that gap there it seemed like that the right side was smaller than the left side in every place that it connected together so that was super annoying but um finished product it came out all right with some uh some glue some tape and some filler so it is what it is you you know you got to deal with it These clear pieces were actually exceptional for an old kit. There was no cuts, nothing on it. If there is any, uh, it was probably my fault. Uh, I was really surprised to see how clean and clear these guys came out. But um, yes, you are seeing this accurately. You do put that in after the fuselage is together or else it's just annoying. Trust me, I tried because I don't trust directions. I tried to put this in before the thing is, it just wouldn't stay in. Pretty easy squares to make on all these clear pieces, and uh, and all the clear pieces actually fit pretty well considering how bad the fuselage was lined up. But that's okay. Um, everything fit good, and just a little bit of filler takes care of a lot of things. Alrighty, this bad boy is all together, everybody. All together. You gotta stuff those things, those holes, in order to paint it, but this boy is ready to be painted. We're ready to get this guy going to sit on a shelf. Mm. But yeah, it went together good. Yep, just some flat red. That's a pretty dark red, actually. Um, and I, and I actually would do this with, with red anytime, paint, paint the surface white first. Don't do it black like I did. Um, you can do some really cool weathering effects with painting surfaces white, like shaded white and, and dotted white first. Um, don't do it the way I did it. This is a pretty clean way to paint something. I just completely covered it and weathered it later after the fact, but painting things white before red is definitely recommended comes out better it looks a little bit more faded like and you don't have to use as much of your red paint in order to do the full coverage there's some cool design work with tape that I did not record that was just it was so tricky to get in there and do this correctly with the wings being on it already in order to get this um, little u-shaped uh, uh, design on there and I did actually use tin foil on this. This is a trick that I learned from Flight Test. They used tin foil to cover up all their models and it worked great. The tin foil trick worked so legit. Even though I don't use it all the time, it like conforms to all the little areas without damaging the model at all. And you're actually able to get a really, really good covered model. So you, and, and it's like, it's hard to rip when you're just shaping it lightly and shaping it around each and every surface. So it was a great trick and I offer it to anybody to try this because it's pretty legit. It works good. You can see these little U-shaped um, um, little designs on the, on the, on the front here. Uh, they, they came out great, man. It, but it did take, I spent probably about eight hours trying to do these designs perfectly. It was tough. It was real tough.
I had to cut out the U-shape perfectly first and then bring both sides down and connect them together for the design there. Uh, the decals, even though this kit was already opened, um, it was not a sealed kit. The decals came out great, just like any other Rebel kit. Um, I, I've been lucky. I, like I, for the channel's sake, I've been lucky. I have not run into a, a problem with the decals other than my Hell Diver, because that was a, such an old kit from the 80s. Um, and, and these decals were actually pretty good, considering the kit had been opened, considering the kit had been around wherever and whichever place. I don't even know. I got it off of eBay um, for like 40 bucks or whatever. And uh, surprisingly, these, these decals worked out pretty good. But always paint your model gloss in order for those decals not to flash. And use Microsaw, Microset, whatever type of decal solution you can in order for the decals to really confine to that surface perfectly. That is a, a major step. And, and I, I don't press this enough on my channel because um, it's just a step that is ingrained into my model building. You just do this step because there's no other way to do it. So um, you have to use decal solution or else it won't confine and it will silver. And silvering is actually where um, the, the, you can see the clear part on the actual model of where the decal is connected together with all the letters. So you definitely don't want that, that on your model. For some reason, I'm a bimbo when it comes to decaling because I literally cannot get it in the right spot the first use. I, I just can't do it. So filming this is really, really frustrating for me. But uh, you know, you just put a bunch of solution on there and figure it out. And the solution won't ruin your paint either unless you just drown it, which I have before. But it, it hasn't ruined it yet. I've, I've drowned it a few times, it hasn't ruined it. But seriously, you can see there, I cannot get it in the right place the first time. I have to move it around everywhere. And sometimes this seriously screws me because these vintage kits, you, you never know what's gonna happen. And like, I'm dealing with one, one decal. Like I have one chance at this, super stressful. So I'm super on top and vigilant with it, but Dude, I can't get it right for the life of me. I always screw this step up. So um, I do the major uh, decal stuff and then the rest, I like all those little lines. Oh my gosh, all those lines were just brutal, man. Brutal. That was a step to be taken. Um, that took me hours of just putting my decal solution on the burner and just going. It's just, just dealing with it. Um, this decal was tricky around this area. There's a bunch of holes and, and like raised panel lines that were really hard to smooth out. So I did the best I could with this decal. But uh, like I said, some of this stuff was a grind. I looked up online um, some different techniques to do a nice faded um, weathering technique on this. And I actually used some rust colors on this so I could bring that rust color out of the black. Um, the black really, really takes away from some good weathering techniques, but I feel like this came out pretty good. And I just used the airbrush and um, sweeped along. And, and, even, and even these look pretty good too on the bottom here. So I was pretty happy with the outcome of, of that. After the fact, I actually did take a little airbrush, put some more color in that area because it looks actually taped off. So I lifted the edges on that and, um, and kind of smeared it out a little bit. Now as you see, I put it on the tail a little bit too. I airbrushed the tail a little bit. Uh, I used some white and some other colors. For the black, I really wanted to get a nice, um, a nice color with weathering this model because it is black and it's hard to weather black models. So I used the tan color to do some dirt and to do some grime um, on the bottom of it uh, because I don't know maybe there's like some sandy area that this thing landed in not sure uh, but that's where I was going and that's where it headed and it was a decent outcome not as good as I would have liked um, maybe I should have used like a dry tan on it preferably it could have been better but this is what I used and I got the finish that I got so that's what it is
So I do this with uh, oil-based paints over latex. I don't do it anymore, but uh, I used to do it this way. Um, using a dollar store brush. This is when I was a beginner, but this is the finished product right here. Um, it's a sweet looking model. I really like the look of this thing and it's pretty legit. Very scale, very, very fun model to do. Um, if you're looking at vintage kits to get into, this is one that, that is a prized possession. I did some silvering around the propellers and the engines, some extra things. And uh, this is the finish, man. It looks great and it's still a great addition to my collection. So have fun watching the rest of the video. There's some more pictures of this thing. And uh, like I said again, ripping that tape off was the best thing ever. Uh, I love that part of the model where you just take the tape off the clear parts because that's when you know it's done, baby. Time to take some photos, time to show your friends, and uh, time to move on to the next project. So thank you guys again for watching. This was a fun build, a fun time. And um, yeah, get yourself one of these, this is fun. Please subscribe, please watch more videos. I have a whole bunch of videos um, out there. I got like over 90. Um, and I am actually building a huge collection. I have every single decal version of every single airplane. Um, I only do like U.S. Air Force. I don't do like firefighter versions. I just think that's dumb. Um, I only do military versions of these aircraft. But um, as you can see, these airplanes are just awesome. And um, I'm building a huge collection so that you can see the finished product of every single version out there of uh, the Revel Monogram kits. So thank you guys again for watching. And let's get back to building.